Today, we discuss the next generation of GPUs, their TDPs, and what it means for your future system. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. GPUs have been on quite a roller coaster in the last few years when it comes to power and thermal efficiency. For the mainstream consumer market, we had a peak in 2010 with Nvidia's GTX 480. That beast was able to suck about 250 watts from the system. For the time, that was considered insane, but things seemed to simmer down as years passed. Continuing with Nvidia, we had the GTX 580. It lowered it a tad bit with a TDP of 244 watts. By the way, yes, TDP and power consumption aren't the same thing, but it's mostly because, well, power consumption fluctuates a lot. It goes up and down, and the peak of that power consumption consumption when on load is usually almost one to one with the TDP. Anyways, then the 680 came up with a pretty good efficiency boost at a 195 watt TDP. Then we had the GTX 780. Things got even better there with a TDP of 165 watts and about an equal power consumption on average. Then the GTX 980 followed the same trend with the exact same TDP. And then we had a bit of a bump up with the GTX 1080. It had a 180 watt TDP. And that's where things kind of took a turn. The RTX 2080 came along and it had a whopping TDP of 250 watts uh, with an equivalent average power consumption. And of course, now we're at Ampere with a huge 320 watt TDP. As for AMD, well, they've jumped up and down a lot over the years, going as far as 320 watts for the R9 290X and 300 watts for the Radeon 7. But for most of their, let's just call them reasonable reasonable models, AMD stayed under the 300 watt barrier. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem like a one-off. Both companies seem to have taken a turn. According to the latest rumors and leaks from tweets to forum posts, things are about to get uh, electric. I'm sorry, I had to. For the red team, we have Navi 31, the successor to the current flagships from AMD from the 6800 to the 6900 XT. If we look at what's out there right now, and as indicated by the patents over the last year or so, it will be a dual die GPU monster. We're still unsure if it's gonna be just two dies or two dies and an IO die like on their CPUs, but we know it's going to be MCM or multi-chip. This flagship on the consumer market could reach between 420 watts to 450 watts for its total board power. As for the competition, Nvidia, the next generation RTX X40 GPUs will apparently still stick with a monolithic design based on their Ada Lovelace architecture. That one would consume between 400 and 500 watts. Apparently, both GPUs would offer an insane amount of FP32 cores. On AMD's side, it is rumored that Navi 31 would have two chiplets with 7,680 stream processors. That's over 15,000 of them, compared to the relatively puny 5,120 of the 6900 XT. As for Nvidia, they already crossed the 10,000 mark with their Ampere architecture, but it would too reach the 15,000 plus CUDA cores. By the way, just to be clear, that doesn't mean that each stream processor or compute unit or CUDA core will be as good as the last generation. I mean, we've seen that happen already, and if you want, you can just go back to Turing and Ampere. Uh, it's not like it's twice the CUDA cores and twice the performance. Anyways, around 450 watts for one component. That's enough to make you upgrade your power supply considering the entire system. If you're planning on running a next generation high-end AMD CPU, well, they apparently will have a TDP of 170 watts and it could consume all the way up to 230 watts. Click up here if you wanna see where I got this information. But in that case, with a Zen 4 CPU, you're gonna want something like a thousand plus power supply minimum. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that's an exaggeration, I'm sorry. So I'm doing a voiceover to correct that. If you're planning on running a next gen high-end AMD CPU, well, you're probably gonna want at least a 750 watt power supply to pair it with a zesty high-end RX 7000 or 
Ferrari RTX 4000 series card. That's not bad, but it's more than a lot of people with current systems for sure. And at that point, you barely have enough room for overclocking. These days, mildly overclocking both CPU and GPU can net you a good extra 100 watts. So make that an 850 watt power supply if that's on the agenda. On top of that, there's power supply efficiency. When you go beyond 75% load, the heat to power ratio changes and your PSU is outputting more unnecessary heat into the room. And that's not talking about the elephant in the room, or should I say the Electrobuzz, because, uh, you know, Intel CPUs aren't really known for their efficiency. So for these guys, maybe a thousand power supply will actually be worth it. Thankfully though, according to a poll made on my community tab, 60% of you guys are above 750 watts, but that still leaves 40% of you guys with a power supply that might need updating if you're looking for the next bright and shiny things. Editing Snows, out. So yeah, prepare your power supplies for the next round of GPUs. At least you have a lot of time to spare. According to current rumors, AMD GPUs are going to roll out in Q3 of 2022. As for Nvidia, we don't really know. We expect a 2022 release too. We just don't know when exactly. So what do you guys think about that? Are you planning on upgrading your power supply? Let me know what you think down below. In any case, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.